Our second reading <clears throat> is coming from the Gospel according to Luke, and it is taken from chapter 21, verses 29 to 36. Luke 21, 29 to 36. That's the New Revised Standard Version from which I am reading. Luke 21, 29 to 36. And as he recorded, then he told them a parable. And this he is Jesus, mind you. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly, I tell you, this generation <clears throat> will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on God so that your hearts are not weighted down with disputation and drunkenness and worries of this life, and that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that take place and to stand before the Son of Man. The word of God for the people of God. <clears throat> I'm excited about this message. First, I'll start by saying that the hottest temps in U.S. history ever recorded <clears throat> was 134 degrees in Death Valley, California on July the 10th, 1913. That's also the hottest temperature ever recorded anywhere on Earth. On that day, July the 10th, on 1913, it was 134 degrees. Now I'm saying that, and that was in Death Valley, California, but I'm saying that to say that wouldn't you want to kind of whine about the weather? If you can whine about the weather, why don't we just glorify God in the midst? Because you can think cool. You can really think cool. <clears throat> and you don't have to have, uh, you don't have to be a Navy SEAL to think cool. But you can be in a hot place and think cool. If you can be in church and think foolish thoughts, you can think cool. U.S. Today has reported that going to a is going to be a problem this summer because of the sweltering temperatures and the smoke. There's no way they say that they can stop the fires from burning in Canada, and there's no way they can control the smoke that still seems to come all the way to the nation's capital. I've seen <clears throat> footages of that. And it's interesting that it comes in that direction. And it's even come as far as to North Carolina and once it was here in Virginia. So when it rains and it pours and it thunders and it lightning, we are grateful to God that he's clearing the air for us to breathe. So when you're tired of the traffic because of the rain, think about the air as being purified. When you just want to have a little issue about it raining all day or all night <clears throat> or the grass is growing so fast because of the rain. If that rain doesn't soak in that earth, we'd be in a bad way. If there was no rain, we'd be in a bad way. So I just wanted to make mention of that. But it has been reported that as long as those fires keep burning, there's going to be a problem, according to the Weather Prediction Center. And so what we can do is thank God when we have clear air. 
and do some breathing exercises and enjoy it. And when it gets a little fuzzy, put your mask on. Don't just put yourself out there. Put your mask on until you go inside a building. <clears throat> when God issued the masses a few years ago, a couple of years ago during the COVID, he was giving us a shout out that he want to breathe, we want to breathe, all God's people want to breathe. Breathing is important. But sometimes it takes a mask to give us, to really give it a second thought of how important and how comfortable it is to breathe. So until we get our act together, God will do what he has to do to get our undivided attention. But according to the USDA's 2012 agriculture census data, California produces the nation's largest assortments and volumes of fruits and vegetables. They lead products in broccoli and artichokes and kiwis and plums and celery and garlic and cauliflower and spinach and carrots and lettuce and raspberries and strawberries. And one third of California's farmland is used to grow vegetables that we have the pleasure of enjoying. Our fruits and vegetables come from all over the United States, but California leads production by a huge margin. So when you hear about the landslides and the mudslides and the earthquakes in California, would you be kind enough to immediately start praying? Alaska is the producer of potatoes, Arkansas, it's rice, and they rank third for poultry and egg produ production, and fourth for cotton. California is also known for its grapes and makes some of the best wines, I'm told. Colorado is known for, for potatoes. Connecticut for its apples. Florida for its oranges, tomatoes, melons, cucumbers, and peppers. Georgia for its peanuts and watermelons. Hawaii, macadamia nuts. Idaho produces potatoes, as we know. Illinois, pumpkins, and Indiana, tomatoes, Iowa, peas. In fact, that's where Clarence Bird's eye, first frozen peas, began in 1920s in Iowa. Kansas, known for potatoes, and Junius Groves proclaims to be the first African-American millionaire west of the Mississippi to amass his fortune by growing more bushels of potatoes per acre in Kansas than anyone else in the world. Kentucky is known for pumpkins and Vermont for maple syrup. Virginia is known for her apples. She offers 15 different varieties of apples, mind you. We also produce peaches and grapes and pumpkins and potatoes and soybeans. And I'm saying that to say all 50 states contribute to our produce, to the things that we eat. So whenever they are affected, it bothers us. That's why we should pray ye for one another. And yes, we are our brother's keeper. The title of the message this morning is Summer. And when we think of summer, we think of those beautiful salads and we accent them with chunks of chicken or shrimp or tuna. We make them all fluffy and pretty. And we may or not may not ask God to bless it. But we would just want to pray for those farmers that are out there in the heat of the day. Even though we have machinery, machinery doesn't take the time to pick an apple without bruising it. Machines don't do that just yet. What season produces the most food? The answer to that is summer. Summer produces the most food. We all want these drinks, these variety. And that's the summer is employment for immigrants and farm workers. Summer is tasty vegetables and fruits for smoothies. What does summer really mean when it applies to the Bible? Because, see, they, they didn't have this kind of thing like we have, a calendar. They had a way of tracking time and days, but it was different. It was years ago, millennials ago. The question is, what was summer then? Throughout the Bible, summer is often portrayed as a season of blessings, harvests, 
and God's abundant provision. It symbolizes the fulfillment of God's promises, the richness of life, and the manifestation of God's faithfulness. From the scorching heat that tests the resilience of individuals to the flourishing crops that sustains community, the various facets of summer offer profound reflections on faith, perseverance, and the cycle of life. I can assure you that for every farmer that has planted seeds into the ground, he has looked and hoped and prayed throughout the duration until the harvest, hoping that the sun doesn't scorch, hoping that the rain doesn't wash, hoping that the little birds don't gnaw them away, hoping. May we look closely at some and uncover its underlying lessons and discover the ways in which biblical narratives points to the season of summer. Our goal is to eliminate the profound truths that lie beneath the surface of summer as recorded in the Bible. I invite us this morning to find inspiration and guidance and renewed faith as we explore our summer. In the Bible, the word summer is mentioned in various contexts, symbolizing different meanings in spiritual lessons, while the specific meaning may vary depending on the passage at hand. But it signifies a season of growth and abundance. Summer is a good time of the year. Now, all of the seasons are great times, but summer particularly stands out. It's like a relief from the dark, cold, bitter winter. And, 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 and it shows the fruit of our labor presented in the spring. Symbolically, summer can represent a time of spiritual flourishing and productivity. It may symbolize a season of spiritual growth where individuals deepen their relationship with God and bear spiritual fruit and experience the abundance of his blessings, such as summer brings forth an abundant harvest. The Bible encourages believers to cultivate a fruitful life producing good works and sharing the love and teachings of Christ and others. We are a reflection of what we see. We are what we eat. And if we think of what we eat and how it nourishes our body and how our body replenishes simply by the monies we invest in the stores to buy the product that's being produced so that we might be healthy, is a continuous cycle. And sometimes I've gone to restaurants and I've looked over and seen people throw away half of their food. No big deal, just don't want to eat it. I'm full. Don't take it home with them to eat later, which is a personal matter, but it's something that I observe. I'm thinking you put on your plate what you intend to eat eat. And if you want more, get more. And God wants you to have as much as you like. He doesn't want us to be a glutton. But when we go to cookouts in the summertime, is the time when we have cookouts and family gatherings and, and we have parties and weddings and graduations and birthdays are year round. But in summer we can have it outside and, and, and we just enjoy grabbing what's on the table and sampling things we've never tried before. But when we look at it, we're looking at the joys of summer. But when we look at a, a butterfly, have we ever just taken the time to wonder, why does that butterfly have more colors on it than the one I saw yesterday? Are they related? Do we ever think about the wasp nest in front of the church? Why they keep coming here and building a nest? Why here, I wonder. I remember a few years ago, I walked through that door and I, and I opened and just as I was open, I saw these little beady eyes in the floral arrangement that was on the door and I couldn't believe my eyes. It was a little baby bird in there. And I'm like, why didn't he build the nest on the door that we don't open? And when you think about those things, God is actually getting my attention. 
I noticed that bird, and I thought, wow. But he sure would have been less disturbed if they built the nest on the other door. <laughs> but the mother bird thought this was an ideal place, and I dare not disturb it. And that nest stayed there for a while. I'm not sure what happened to the nest. But my point is God is getting our attention. Can we not look at the bird's nest and see how much that bird cared for that baby? That they put it in a safe place. God directed it here so we'd have a lesson to learn. Our parents had taken good care of us. And even if we had the world's worst parent, our Heavenly Father has taken excellent care of us. Let's just look at summer. Summer is a season that holds a special place in the hearts of people around the world. It's a time of warmth and sunshine and vibrant energy. The concept of summer is associated with longer days and flourishing nature and a sense of abundance. It's a season when crops are harvested and families gather for vacations and communities come alive with outdoor activities and the lawnmowers start rolling and <coughs> children are making noises. Dogs are barking and animals are being walked. It's just a really great time. So then let's just look, if we will, at the three scriptures that were read so graciously by Mary Sue. And the first being was Genesis 8. The purpose of the flood, mind, it was 8.22. And that scripture says, as long as the earth endures Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. God said that. He says, as long as the earth endures, as long as the earth endures, seed time and harvest, your plant and something will come up. Cold and heat, so get over it, wrap up when it's cold, remove a few garments and fan when it's hot. There'll be summer and winter, day and night. It will never stop. Isn't that interesting? God declared that once Noah had exited the ark. These were new ground rules. He said, sure thing, yeah, I let it rain 40 days and 40 nights, but it was still night and day. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. And when all the water was gone and the boat was empty with Noah and his family and all of the animals aside, it still was going to be day and night. And it said summer and winter didn't mention fall and spring. Initially, I think it was just that, day and night, and there was the cold and the heat. We're the ones that, I think, as time progressed, put in the spring and the fall. And Proverbs 6, 6 to 8 that she read, it says, go to the ant, you lazy bones. Consider its ways and be wise. Without having any chief or officer or ruler, it prepares its food in summer and gathers it. Substance in the harvest. See, they didn't say fall. They said harvest. This is the Lord's words. God is telling us to look at the ant. Pay attention. He's given us birds for a reason. I used to have a bird bath in my front yard. Oh, and the birds would come and have fun swimming and carrying on. And then they would jump up on my balcony by my bedroom and they'd have an early morning meeting. And this woke me up. Like five in the morning, they just chirping and carrying on and voting and canceling agreements. And I don't know what they were doing. So I finally decided I've got to do something about this bird bath. So I turned the top of it upside down and it looked like a mushroom. So I was the only one in the neighborhood with a mushroom. <laughs> and it took about 30 days before the birds realized that, they, that it's not there anymore. But my point is, they can develop a habit, just like humans. And they find comfort in doing it, and they find confidence and no fear to do it. I used to feed the cats on one day, 
of the neighborhood, wherever they came from. On Fridays, always, and they do not know the days of the week. But like clockwork, every Friday, those cats, wherever they had come from, came to my yard. They cannot read signs, and they don't know the days of the week, but every Friday they were there, and like clockwork, every Friday, I fed them. In addition to that, I fed the birds on the other side of the house. So the cats didn't bother the birds, amazingly. And I did that while well, I lived in a bigger place and, and had lots of land and that kind of thing. And that worked out perfectly. And I was like, look at God. And I sit and look out of the window and watch them. They didn't bother each other. And every now and then a stray would come in and cause some confusion, as happens in any neighborhood. But for the most part, it went really smoothly. And God lets us know he has uniformity. The ants have an assignment, and they do their assignment. Every animal and creature does what they're designed to do except humans. We're just so smart, we just can't hear. We can't see. We can't reason. We, our will is just so self-centered and so self-focused. So then we look at Psalm 74, 16 to 17, which is the other verse that was read. Yours is the day. Yours also the night. You established the luminaries in the sun. You have fixed all the bounds of the earth. You made summer and winter. The psalmist is declaring that this is God. He made the stars. And I don't know if you ever go out on the porch at night, you know, just take a walk and look up to see the, the sky. Every now and then I see red lights and I know that's an airplane. But I look at the stars. They look so far away. I see moons every now and then, a full moon, half moon, a quarter moon, and that makes a difference because some babies are born at certain times and the moons have an effect on that. So does the, the tides in the water. The moon has an effect on it. Everything works together. And in the summer, all of it is so bright. It's not like it is in the fall or the winter. It's just vibrant. It seems to have energy. And so when we look at Genesis 8.22, we're finding that God is not changing. He makes a remarkable promise regarding the stability of the Earth's cosmological stability while the Earth remains. We know that the Earth will be destroyed by fire and be made in a new heaven and a new Earth, but that's yet to come. And then it'll be just day forever. There'll be no more night in the new heaven and the new earth. When God burns up this planet and everything in it and on it, and he'll, he'll build a new, it'll all be day. And God's sun would be the sun. It would be the light, the illumination. There'll never be darkness. Because the purpose of night and day is for our benefit as humans, as animals. A time to rest, a time to awaken, a time to plant, a time to reap. That is the purpose of night and day, a time to be born and a time to die. So we're looking at summer. God promises the seasons will continue as the seasons are caused by the very delicate balance of the earth's tilt and the very narrow window within which the earth revolves around the sun. And one tiny shift would completely upset the seasons or make the earth uninhabitable. One little off movement of the orbit would cause us not to live on this planet. And we need not panic or worry, because God has already said, there will be night and day, and he's going to hold it together. <laughs> he's going to hold it together for us. We thank God for that. Proverbs tells us in the scripture, gives us to see the innate, innate instinctive nature of the ant who takes advantage of the summer together for the winter. 
He looks on a lazy man who lacks wisdom and fails to see it in the little busy creatures at his feet. We just don't take someone to pay attention. We, we, we don't. Some people go to the lake in the summer and they fish. They go early in the morning before the sun gets high. And they never catch the same fish. Same lake, but always a different fish. There's a lot to learn from that. May we awake during the summer to the wisdom that we find in insects and butterflies and ants and birds. May we seek God's wisdom during the summer, seeing things that had really laid dormant during the cold season. Even your pets are happier in the summer. They run and jump in the first pool of water, and they, the dog throws all the water all over the place and dries himself. You don't have to get a blow dry on a towel. He does it. God gave him that. They, we have to dry off. You have to run behind the kids and say, look, you need to dry off. And then you need to pick up your towel. <laughs> Our pets, during the summer, it's just a good time. It is a good opportunity to have fun, to change our pace in life. But then we look at what Luke has to tell us. And Jesus is, said, he told them a parable, and he said, look at the fig tree and all the trees. And as soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer's already near. God has signs that lets us know that the season is near, the summer season. Don't you think perhaps he'll give us signs to let us know when he's near? Or maybe you never gave that a thought. Well, he says further on, he says, so when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Because he's in charge of the, the sprouts on all trees. He's responsible for all fruits and berries. When we see these things, don't we think God is near? God is in the bottle of water. Should I waste it? Should I toss it? Should I give God thanks? I would think so. We want, we want to acknowledge him. The more we pay attention to him, the more summer remains. Because summer is bright and, and the light is, 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 is extended and the days are longer. And summer can go on in our heart and our mind for as long as we permit it to. Or you can just shut down in the winter and be depressed and stay in darkness and close your windows down and not let the sun in. But he goes on to say, truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. The generation of the human life. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. He says, my words will stay the same. Be on God so that your hearts are not weighted down with disputation and drunkenness and the worries of this life. And that day does not catch you unexpectedly like a trap. And I'm sure you've seen something caught in a trap. Hopefully we haven't been caught in one. But certainly we've seen a trap even in a movie. It happens quickly. Doesn't get a warning. It doesn't ring any bells. It just happens quickly. And then you're stuck and you can't get out. For it will come upon all who live on the face of the whole earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. So what are we doing? We're paying strict attention. We're walking in the summer. And we're seeking communion with God. We want to enjoy this summer like never before because it has its numbered days. And then the fall will come and the beautiful trees will lose their leaves. And then we'll have more raking to do. So if you're thinking about complaining about cutting the grass, then the leaves are going to come. So you might not want to complain at all. You might just want to rake the leaves, get a good rake while they're on sale. There are ways that we can enjoy the summer. 
God says, this is the message for today is the summer. What is the meaning of summer? It's of harvest, fun times, fresh air. Communion is a way of accomplishing missions suggests just as that we left out things we were going to do in the fall, and then we postponed it to the winter. Then the summer comes, an ideal time to get it done. A wonderful time to take care of those chores. And you feel better at it. You don't have all those clothes on you. You kind of got your arm sleeves all rolled up. And you've got lemonade right there at your hand. You've got the music playing, and there you are fixing that little old fixture that's way overdue. And you feel good about yourself. It often takes a while for things to sink in, for us to really stop the smell of the flowers. But life is moving so quickly that if we don't stop to do that now, when do we plan to do it? We have summertime. Remember our summertime? Our springtime is when we were little. We don't remember much of that. Our parents remember that part. But the summertime of our lives, that's in our young adults, up to maybe 50. We're having fun and we're doing things and we're growing and, and, and we're planning and there's never a dull moment. But then one day the fall of life will greet us. And certainly the winter. But we can always have the mind and the hope of summer. Summer is a great time. It's one of the seasons that mentions in the Bible. As I said, it doesn't say fall. It doesn't say spring. It simply says winter and summer, hot and cold. So this summer, may we do some really fun things like spend an intentional time in nature, take some strolls, take some walks. Actually scrub your pet without taking them to the grooming place. See how much fun that can be. <laughs> I had a friend who cut her dog's hair. Well, one side was longer than the other, but that dog didn't know. <laughs> she was gonna save money with her bright ideas. <laughs> Reflect on summer imagery. Explore biblical passages. Take your Bible and read it this summer in your lawn chair. Just spend a little time just browsing. Turn off the news. No matter what's going on, God's got us. Express gratitude every day. Find something that you think is beautiful. A plant. A child. Those darlings are cute, believe it or not. Right, Ross? <laughs> Even though school is closed, they, they are sweethearts out there. Encourage them. Share them. Yeah. Say, hey, buy them a popsicle or something. You know? Make their day. So they can go home and say, you know, this lady just, just did that. I don't know why, Mom. She stood right there and told me to go in McDonald's and get whatever I wanted, and she gave me $5 or $10 or whatever. Never had anybody do that before. What a good memory for a summer to remember, especially for a lot of young people who won't be going any place for the summer. It's extremely hot. I was going to visit a friend in Phoenix, and it was three digits. I thought, uh, we'll do that later. <laughs> Let's wait until the fall. We do want to go out and have some fun. But to conclude, we explore the meaning of some in the Bible and uncover its significance, and we know that we can compare the scriptures. If it's a good, powerfully warm scripture, count it as summer. And you say all scripture is, is powerful and pleasant. Well, it depends on how we receive it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Ah, take a deep breath. Great is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And take a deep breath. I can do all things through Christ's strength. Whatever scriptures that you have retained, recall them, speak them, and feel, feel the life being recharged within you. The word of God is life. Speak it as often as you can. Furthermore, thank God for the summer, the heat of it, the discomfort that might come with it. The good thing is that you can go into your house where it's air conditioned. I don't know if you remember the days when you had to put your windows up on a fan. I don't, anybody remember those days? Okay, uh -huh. well, that's a lot different now. You just 
It's cool when you wake up. It's cool when you go to bed. And don't let it break. There's panic in the house. There's panic. May we bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do not know when you're returning. So we ask you to prepare us right now for your return. Give us the mind of Christ that we may be focused and in tune with your will and will be found pleasing in your sight and alert in this world, but not of this world. May you find us armed with faith and love. And may we begin now to process every decision in the line with your word. By your grace, we purpose to develop daily in the likeness of Jesus as his disciple and friend. We want to be found vigilant and attentive and filled with gratitude. Give us to be watchful, wise, and faithful workers in your kingdom. We refuse to lay down and let life pass us by or to be persuaded to grow weary and to faint. May we take advantage of every opportunity, Heavenly Father, to expand your kingdom. You've appointed us, each of us, for the signs to be on God, to be sober and to be alert at all times, praying that we may escape and to desire to stand before the Son of Man. As we continue to follow your instructions, we will also encourage others to do the same. We await you, Jesus, as we enjoy and embrace the summer and with its splendor and its excellence. Summer is the season that you have promised and it is blessed in abundance. I pray to the God, our Father, and ask all these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, because we know upon his return, that will be a summer. Amen. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Summer.